Welcome to ETMC TV and this informative presentation by George Plotkin, MD, Neurologist and Medical Director of the ETMC Movement Disorder Center. Dr. Plotkin will discuss Parkinson's disease and other movement disorders. Thank you for choosing ETMC TV. Most diseases that are modern have been described 2,000 years ago. Diabetes was described 1500 BC. Parkinson's was something new and it comes 50 years into the uh, development of the Industrial Revolution with the breaking of ground in England, opening up coal and gas and oil to expose to individuals. And we suspect that something about toxicants probably has a lot to do with Parkinson's. Uh, that said, we find Parkinson's is a very maddening disease because it can occur at any age, although the average age is around 56. It can affect people independent of family history. Majority of Parkinson's has nothing to do with family history. The actual treatment of Parkinson's goes back to shortly after its discovery as a disease. The earliest medications to treat it are actually very similar to the drugs we use now. Uh, the first drug was belladonna, because, and that's atropine, uh, later turned into artane and cogentin, which are the drugs we use now. And so what we want to do by giving people medication by giving them deep brain stimulation, by doing anything we can do to improve the quality of life, physical therapy, uh, any sort of education, is we want to give them back their quality of living. That's what it's all about. You can have a programmable computer sitting in your chest that's even rechargeable in some cases that then manipulates the output into an electrode in your brain and can shut down all of the different symptoms of Parkinson's that are disturbing to the patient and give them back function. And so this is a method of re restoring independence. And that's really what medicine should be about. The horizon is really great. Uh, we are involved in a lot of research projects in this area. There are a lot of things we'll be looking at, and there are other diseases that stimulation is very good for. Severe essential tremor. It's a dominant disease. It runs in a family where if one parent had it, half the kids get it. And they might have a little bit of shaking. If it's not in a dominant hand, most people don't care. If it interferes with your ability to hold a fork or to sign a check, it gets to be a problem. A lot of medicines for that don't work. And so there, we've been very lucky that we have a target in the brain that shuts that off, can give people about 80 to 90% benefit. And we are able to do that for patients who have severe essential tremor. We do dystonia patients. We're a center for that. And there, dystonia is abnormal contraction, which can turn a person into a pretzel can't move. We had an older gentleman we recently did who had a peg tube, in other words a feeding tube in his belly, and had been unable to speak and was confined to a wheelchair who's now eating normally, walking normally, and carries out normal activities with a generator in his brain. So his dystonia is completely resolved by electrical treatment. The, the general thing we found, and we're trying to teach our colleagues about this, is that the time to send a patient for deep brain stimulation is not when there's nothing else to do. The time to send them is when they're doing well, but the medicines are not up to the expectations that the patient had. They're still able to care for themselves. They're still living independently. Those are the patients who are going to benefit from this. We've implanted well over 400 electrodes, probably closer to 500, uh, here alone. And the experience with all the other technologies and what we do, we follow probably over 2,500 people with Parkinson's, which makes us a major center. We are using state-of-the-art equipment. We are consultants to the companies that make the equipment. We're often doing, in, in my case, I'm doing research with Medtronics on developing and perfecting new technologies. Uh, we do work on advancing Parkinson's by doing actual trials in the field. I think it's very easy to get referred. All you have to do is ask your primary provider or your neurologist for a referral for assessment for possible stimulator. In other words, first of all, am I a candidate? Is this going to help me or is it not? It's very important to have a movement specialist look at the patient. We've had people referred where they really aren't candidates. The best resources are the National, uh, National Parkinson's uh, Foundation, they have a great website, and there's the American Parkinson's Disease Association. The National Institutes of Health has good references, and then there is wemove.org, W-E-M-O-V-E.org, uh, which is a website which has an enormous amount of information on movement disorders, both for the practitioner and the patient. 
Dr. Plotkin is the medical director of the ETMC Movement Disorder Center, located at 700 Olympic Plaza in Tyler, Texas. For answers about movement disorders or to make an appointment for evaluation, please call 1-800-728-2702. You can find more information about treatment for movement disorders online at etmc.org slash neuromovement or by watching the ETMC TV interview with Dr. Mark Renfro, neurosurgeon at the ETMC Neurological Institute, available on this same Suddenlink channel, number 997. George Plotkin, MD, has a PhD in Physiological Chemistry from Massachusetts Institute of Technology and is a board-certified neurologist who graduated magna cum laude as a doctor of medicine from Boston University School of Medicine. He has earned fellowships from Harvard Medical School in movement disorders and neuromuscular disorders and has helped make ETMC a leading provider of treatment for these conditions.